Welcome to Honestly Rated. Today we'll be talking about your favorite most expensive Skylander, Robo. Being almost up to $800, almost to $900, and being at lowest that I've seen $200, it really begs the question if Robo's gameplay and design is really worth that much. So I bought him, and today we're going to go through all that to really figure out if Robo's really worth that amount of money. But first, let's talk about Robo lore. How did he become a Skylander inside of this game? So, Robo was just a robot that was not fully complete by somebody. We don't know who this somebody is, they never say, and even Robo doesn't know, and that's how his main mission starts first. He wants to become complete. Without him being complete, he can't talk to nobody! So he went looking around, and he was able to find one of Chaos's old lairs. And within this lair, he found a strange device that was able to give him a bunch of data on a lot of things. How to talk, how to do everything, and how to become a very good bozeman for some reason. And now, with all this knowledge, he was also to be able to figure out that Chaos is not a nice guy. And even though he doesn't know what he was meant to do, he now knows fully clear after downloading all this data, and that is to go fight evil and join forces with Eon. And since he has very good boating techniques, Eon decided to make him a sensei, literally on the spot. So he must be good, and hopefully his gameplay will be able to shine that. But as we go into the moveset, I do also just want to preface that if you do want to see a Skylander on Honestly Rated, just leave it down in the comments. Now today, this one is more of just a me pick, just because I recently got Robo, and I feel like, you know, just having the knowledge of who this character would, would just be beneficial to a lot of people. I still do pick, and I will wish to go through every single Skylander in this series. So, if you just leave it down, it lets me know who you guys want to see next, and I can bring your character choices even quicker. So, with that all said... Let's go check out Robo, look at his moves as kind of like a one one I really haven't looked at his moves too much, and figure out is he really good and is he worth it. The two installations of Robo are going to be Archer Combo and Whirling destructo -Matic. These are two very polar opposite moves that do have a little bit to talk about and digest. So we'll start with his primary, which is his bow move, his Archer Combo, that can either work or not. It's a curse and a blessing at the same time, and it's very awkward. So, it's a bow move that is a combo move, which first leads into a drill bow, which will push enemies back, then lead into a triple shot, which will shoot three arrows that are not drills, just simple shots, which will lead him into doing a somersault into the air, and throwing a arrow downwards and doing an explosion that can hit many things. The reason why this is somewhat of a curse and a blessing is that it can do a lot of damage. Robo doesn't do a lot of damage with this bow, if you noticed. Uh, he does roughly like 11 to 7 with the first bow shot, and it works for characters that will get pushed back. So, most basic enemies. But things like spell punks, the stupid fucking sheep with the wands, or the big sheep with the big sword, or that giant ass cactus, aren't going to get affected by the drill. So that means he's doing roughly 6 to 7 damage per shot, and it doesn't do a lot. And the combo does take a little bit to pull off, and if you do get hit, it does kind of get interrupted. So it's a kind of a curse and a blessing. But we do solve another move, our Hamster Ball, or whatever the fuck they call it, the World of Destructomatic V1. It is a, it's a ball that he curls himself into, I'm guessing with his fucking cape or something, has arrows on the outside, and you simply just roll over enemies. It does a lot of damage. This is, you know, your simple sensei move right here, doing over a hundred at very early states, it is the damage dealer. It's the crowd controller. It is the thing you would use against bosses. But with it though, it does have an extremely long charge time. Like this thing takes a little bit to actually get into use. So you kind of want to use it before the enemy gets to you or you will probably get hit. It, there's no doubt about it. But the rewards are there. So they work off pretty nice off each other. Again, the only thing right now is like these guys, the big guys that don't get hit by the bow, really do cause Robo a bit of trouble to try to finish off. And something I do also should mention, just because it will change later, is his air shot. His air shot is a bow shot that explodes. It's basically the ending of his triple combo. And this is a pretty good move too. It does self roughly 60 damage at level 13. And is kind of the main stay move that I use to do a bunch of damage, but this will change, so just kind of keep this at the back of your mind. Next two up, we have Reinforced Arrows and Deconstruction Laser. Reinforced Arrows just allows for our arrows to explode when they get onto contact from a wall, or if they just kind of, you know, fly by with the drill. 
the drill one, which again doesn't happen a lot. It just depends on the enemies you're fighting, but does happen. It will do more damage. It's just a simple damage upgrade, but also does more than just hey, more damage. Look at me. So, you know, it's cool. But deconstruction laser is probably the main talking point here. Deconstruction laser being our special allows us to do our best cosplay of Cyclops and shoot a laser beam out of our head, which for one, I personally like. That's pretty fucking cool. Cyclops is a cool fucking Marvel character. But that's not the main talking point here. The main talking point is that little red circle you might see on enemies after I hit them with it. What this allows us to do is even more damage. And that's pretty nice. I like things like that. I like it when it's not only just like a base upgrade that damages one to one to one and it's just like there's like three multiple ones. I like this. This just increases Robo's damage by a lot and preferences to use the Cyclops laser. I like it a lot for that reason. And it's also a like basically full screen shot. You can do this from anywhere and you'll probably hit your target if you just aim right. And that's super nice. And this will boost our damage a lot as time goes on. So just kind of look at the damage. It does increase it by a good amount. And I like it for that. And it just also does solid damage it by itself. I prefer I use this more than the bow when it comes to enemies that don't move. Just because it's somewhat fast shooting. And again, full screen. Last two updates on the primary path. We have Whirling Destructomatic V2 and Havoc Orb. Whirling Destructomatic just increases our damage and speed. And overall funness of our little hamster ball we can go into. It's nothing much to talk about. I already think the hamster orb did a lot of damage. So just adding more is, you know, kind of not unnecessary. Since we just also got our laser, which makes us do almost like 400 damage. Um, it's not much of a talking point. The speed is nice though. I will mention that. The speed is very nice. Robo is an extremely slow character. And is needing of something to go faster i kind of wish just getting like getting the roll off was quicker maybe not having that much or maybe the end pose of robo being changed would have probably been a more of a nicer change but you know what i can't hate on it it does at least give the, the speed but the main thing that is here to talk about is our orb our havoc orb which is actually our jump shot. Our jump shot changes and it gets away from a single arrow shot that will explode Hawkeye style. But instead just does more of a porcupine shooting off its needles. Now it can't do that but you know something like that. You shoot off arrows from all directions and in some ways it is good and in some ways it is bad. For one if you had to compare it to the last one it doesn't have as much potency to be able to be aimed. This is kind of sporadic and it doesn't always shoot in the same place it feels and even though it's doing more damage than the last one at some points i'm just like man i really wish i still had my old shot but if you do get close to an enemy and you do this jump shot you're probably gonna hit your enemy and you maybe even hit him up to like four times which is cool is nice but something i really liked about the other one the one that i could actually aim and shoot is that i didn't have to get close to my opponents to actually do the damage i could just stay far away and just do a jump shot and i also did kind of like going into hamster ball into jump shot and it just felt kind of cool and i'm not saying you can't do it now but it's just a little bit more sporadic a little bit more random and sometimes i don't like random sometimes i like precision and being able to shoot it but it's really up to the situation i don't see it as a negative but i also don't see it as a benefit in some situations but now we go on to the top path which is our archery mastery we're gonna learn a lot more archery shit so, first thing is charge shot, and this one is something I can definitively say is kind of, not even kind of, it is just bad. It is something that is understandably just kind of confusing to know. It allows us to charge our shot up to twice. It goes to big, and then big and charged, which that sentence alone makes it feel very dirty to say. But... It just doesn't feel like it does more damage comparatively to what a normal bull shot can do. It doesn't feel like it's doing more to bigger enemies. It doesn't feel like it's doing more to smaller enemies. It wasn't like the bow shot was doing a necessarily bad damage in the first place. It's simple drill shot. It doesn't feel like it does anything more than just what our normal bow shot can do. And with that also, it's just kind of confusing. Sometimes it actually does do a lot of damage that I've seen. It sometimes went up to like 400 and 200 depending on how high I was able to get it, but it's not consistent. It wasn't like a shot that when I shot would do it all the time. It was just kind of by random and sometimes it was like 
when I hit the so, like the side of the bow. I don't know if I'm not supposed to hit it all right, but sometimes it will hit with all right. It's a confusing mess that doesn't feel like it has enough description to fully understand. But as using it, it just doesn't feel like it is doing anything. So I'm just going to come to the conclusion that it doesn't do anything different. It is just a one probably poorly designed move and just for two doesn't do anything different. I looked at the damage side to side. I tried it against big enemies, small enemies, you know, ones that will move, ones that don't move. Will the explosion do more damage at the end? It just doesn't do that. It doesn't do it at all. So right now, this top path is looking a little rough. Hopefully the next two can bring this up a little. Speaking about the next two, we have improved archery and archer combos. Now improved archery is just a damage dealer. I don't really want to talk about that, but archer combos is something I do want to talk about because it's somewhat good and somewhat bad. It's a, like a yin and yang of combos. So the first one that I do want to talk about, the good one, is his arrows from above, his raining arrows. And the reason I like it is because it kind of acts like a shield. It follows around him and does a lot of area damage. And for one, you can question how Robo does that. That's kind of insane that he was able to predict where he's going to move. But still, that's pretty cool. I like it. And it lasts a couple of seconds. The one that I find kind of questionable is the one where he shoots arrows out of his hands. Now, the reason I find it kind of questionable, if you want to say it's good or not, is because it's very difficult to turn. And if you don't particularly aim in the right direction you need to, you're probably going to miss and nothing's going to happen out of it. And it's also a combo move that can get hit out of comparatively to his arrow where if you get hit it won't stop it you can continue onward and that's very nice so yeah you kind of have to be like in a far range and you have to ha have make sure that the enemy doesn't move or you don't like accidentally go and turn the wrong way while using it and the reason i find it a little bit questionable and i don't find it totally bad is because i feel like it's more meant to be used against cactuses or like the big cactus the big sheep bosses in general something that doesn't move as fast or maybe a movie you would kind of prepare before things get going. Just something like that. It's just, I don't know. It's not bad, but it also just kind of feels like just my simple bow shot, just times two. And I don't say I kind of like the bow shot because it takes away the enemies, and this one doesn't. This one does just, this one just kind of explodes in the same place. But that's totally up to people's perception on it. Uh, I'll just put it more in the mid, but then also put the arrows that fall from above way higher. But with all that aside now, we have Tech Mastery, our bottom path with Enhanced Destruction Laser and Whirling Destructomatic V3. Wow, we're really getting creative here with the names. So, our laser can now be charged. And if I was the game, that's all I would say. Because for some reason, they don't actually give you a description on what this is doing. It, it, it literally just says, charge laser. Alright, go, go ahead, Sonny. But from what I've seen, it just seems like it just adds more damage to the laser itself. You're not doing any more damage than you were before with... The red thing doesn't seem like the red thing lingers as long as it like longer now. It just seems like the laser itself is doing more damage. So okay, cool. Now for the thing that you maybe want you maybe question a little bit is our destructomatic. What is what is added with this V3, huh? Well, what's added with the V3 now is that his stupid little superhero pose he does at the end of the move is now no longer useless. What this now does is just does like a little explosion. His super pose actually has some force behind that shit, and he actually hits things around him. And depending on how many things you hit, or how many things you kill with it, damage is either dealt more or less. That's it. So, I like the two upgrades, and the world destructomatic itself. Again, it's already doing a lot of damage, but to be fair, that stupid little superhero pose at the end really does make him vulnerable to getting hit, because it is pretty long. Robo is a very... It's a very attentive character that has a lot of slowness to him, even into his moves. So just giving him things to just maybe just kill him in one hit isn't the worst. <laughs> like it, it wouldn't be the worst thing, or you're gonna get hit right after. So it's fine. I I, I wouldn't say anything special. Now for the actual special thing, mechanical obsklisk. And if you try to tell me that I said that wrong, you're right. I can't say that for shit. But it doesn't matter how much I can say it. It just matters on how well this move can actually work. So, what does this thing even even do? Robo turns into a gigantic fucking eyeball, maybe like even the one from regular show, and decides to blast anybody in his eyesight. And the way you do this is by holding down your charge button. Now you may be asking, well, didn't you just say we got to upgrade our charge thing? Yes, so now our laser is just naturally doing what the charge initially did, and now if you charge, you get into the obsculisk. And with that, what it does is actually slow down also. Even though it's doing less damage, it does more damage over time. 
as you see, because it is a gigantic ass laser, and it's kind of cool. You can't lie. Robo turning into a literal gigantic fucking eyeball is pretty cool. But this also raises a question, because I definitely felt like that maybe for the top path, that one that I find a little bit questionable, should have been something like this. The two arrows coming out of the hands. Maybe why not make him, like, turn into, like, somewhat of a turret pose? You know, like, his legs kind of stay stationary, and he shoots fucking brrr out of his hands. And he could, like, turn and shit. Like, wouldn't that be kind of cool? I thought it would, and I definitely think it would make it a little bit less wonky to use. But... Maybe I should have put that on the top path, but I didn't really want to spoil this bottom one. So, yeah. We have two more things to kind of look at. My Soul Gem, and I also guess it's Sky Chi, even though I don't really rate that with the character. So, let's go take a look at those two, because they don't have a lot to them. So, the final update that Robo can get on his pass is Robo's Rampage, which sounds fucking crazy. And let me tell you, it is kind of crazy. Robo's Rampage just kind of combines everything. You jump, you throw shit out of your hands, you throw shit out of your eyes... His fucking helmet goes back. Whoa, and he goes crazy. And um, it's a little bit wonky to use. It is a move that in, like always shoots in front of you. You cannot like designably like aim down, aim to the left, aim to the right. You gotta aim that shit. And if you don't, you're getting hit for sure. Because it doesn't hit anything below you. It doesn't hit anything beside you, obviously. And you cannot jump out of this move, nor get out of it before it ends. Or if something hits you. And even the ending has a bit of end lag. So... You really gotta pick when you get to use this move. This is another move that I feel like is just more attentive to things that have a lot more health. I should have been saying that from the beginning than trying to go like this whole loopy way of saying mini boss. Things with more health, I feel like this is probably where it's used more. And if you don't, you're probably getting smacked for it. And depending on where you are, you know, how much you're playing, how, what, what difficulty you're playing, maybe it doesn't really matter. But on higher difficulties, in some ways I like to think about these senseis, uh, they will probably get punished pretty hard for it. And Robo is one that will. Last up that I really don't take into rating is Control Alt Defeat, his Sky Chi. And the reason I don't take it is because all Sky Chi's are the same, just something that are super powerful. And the only thing I can really rate it on is if it's cool or not. And Robo's, I can say it's pretty cool. He literally turns himself into a gigantic ass drill, and you know, he drills everybody. He, he loves just drilling people from the back, from the front end, from everywhere. He loves to drill! And it's pretty good. You know, it does a lot of damage. Who would have guessed? But that's control of defeat. You know, if you've never seen it before, there you go. Look at it. Looking at his glory. You know, Drill Sergeant would be proud. But let's go on to the final rating of Robo. So, after taking a look at Robo and really digging into his source code to make sure I could find every single ounce of him and analyzing it to the T, what is my final rating on Robo? Well, I'm going to give Robo a nice 4 out of 5 on the honesty scale. Reason being is that I definitely like Robo as a character, and I definitely find him to be more above average than some Skylanders. Uh, I think his uniqueness and creativity could have been pushed a little bit more. I feel like for him being able to actually transform into different things and being a robot, I just didn't see a lot of it. And there are some things like I could mention here. So it's some things that I kind of noticed is that he kind of dealt with electricity in some type of way. I noticed that like with his whirly thing, he has that electricity static with it. So why not, instead of making it a like a charge bow, it would have made like a shock bow that would stun enemies and keep them in place. Then you can use moves that, you know, tend to not be very movable to be able to shoot at and, you know, correctly aim. Something like that. Something that would pair very nicely and just kind of really use the aspect that he's a robot. I didn't really see like a turret based mode where, again, I think like a turret based mode with his arm cannons would have been pretty cool. I think that would have been a little nicer and he would just turn. That's it. Like I just think like stuff like that would have been nice. And just like those kind of weird decisions of just kind of, you know, not making him able to turn very well. Uh, some things just kind of just being more of just like, here's more damage, here's more damage, here's more damage, but in like kind of more convoluted ways, obviously are nicer than just more base damage, but still, at the end of the day, just more damage. But the real question at the end is that should you go buy a Robo out on eBay for $400 or $800, $200, something above the $100 range? And that's probably no. Uh, <laughs> don't do that. Just go buy an NFC chip and go play him. I definitely think you should play Robo. I think he's super unique as a character and as a sensei. But I just don't think you should be warranted to have to spend that much money on a character like that unless you are very either rich or very dedicated to wanting these skylanders so it's really up to you but personally 
out of this now, if I wasn't a dedicated collector and wanting all of them, I probably wouldn't buy them. But that's me at the end of the day. And that's been honestly rated for you. Remember to leave your Skylander below. I really do appreciate you watching all the way to the end. And with that, uh, I'll see you next Saturday. Go look at check out the playlist too. There's a bunch of them more in there. But yeah, thank you. And I hope to see you next time. Peace.